Hey everyone, Biodroid here, and I welcome you from my alternative account this time. Um, it's called Perceptor, and um, this has a particular reason. Um, because I finally want to do a, a hopefully not too long video on base design. I know there are tons of videos about base design out there, so I, and I don't think that I can actually tell you that much new stuff you don't already know. Um, if you watch one of these videos, but I want to do it a little different at least um, uh, Because my alternate account just hit the HQ 14 recently and um, I built all the extra uh, Defenses and walls that come with HQ 14 so now I'm ready to um, Set up a new design and this is what I want to do together with you build a, a base from scratch and um, yeah, share my thoughts on base design with you in the process. And uh, I hope this is a little more interesting than just, uh, yeah, listening to me babbling about base design. <laughs> um, as you can see, I did, I did a little prep work here and um, yeah, pushed all defenses to the side so that we have all the uh, space needed to create a base from scratch. I really wish that Space Ape would... Um, include some sort of reset button for base building into the game where you just can clean the map from all your, your buildings. Your buildings go into some sort of, I don't know, inventory or whatever, and then you can build it uh, step by step because moving all the, the, the stuff around um, really is a time killer, especially um, when, you're, when you want to build your base from scratch. If you're just rearranging stuff, um, on an existing design, I think it's fine, but um, yeah, a reset button for the base design would be pretty cool. Um, but I don't see it in the foreseeable future. So, where to start? Um, to me, when I build a base, it's all about, um, yeah, three basic rules that I want to stick to and um, I want to see fulfilled with my new design. And um, I want to walk through all these rules today with you. And I hope it's uh, it's helpful for you. Um, the first, the big question, the first big question is where to put the headquarters. And I think um, it's a no-brainer that your headquarter should be as far behind as possible, or at least somewhere in this uh, in this back area here, um, simply to yeah have the the attacker walk. Um, yeah, some sort of obstacle course towards your headquarters before they actually get to the core of your base. So I, yeah, I always put the base, um, the HQ, to the back. Um, not necessarily all the way to the back, um, you could do that, um, but having it a little bit more up front gives you the possibility to maybe hide the defense behind the HQ, which is... Uh, a nice little trick, which is pretty common, but um, yeah, sometimes it works when, when somebody wants to get through your uh, base fast and they don't see that there's a little defense hidden behind the building. And you can also um, yeah, uh, position some of your, if you want to save your or protect your resources, you can um, put your, your um, storage buildings here or whatever. So we'll just put the HQ here for now and um, yeah, maybe we'll move it a square. For, uh, move it some squares around, but it's okay for, for now. Um, the first rule that I usually try to stick to is that I don't want my base to fall victim to one of the most common war strategies or attack strategies. And um, to me, it's it's um, four different strategies that I want to av avoid, basically. Um, the first one, of course, is being rushed um, by Megatron. And... Um, him pulling the whole squad with him and um, the easiest way to do so is not to spread your base out too wide because as soon as you have uh, let's say um, a building um, somewhere here or, or here or whatever um, it is a nice nice path for Megatron to let's say rush here then rush there and have the whole squad walk around the base to the back and near the headquarters. This is uh, something you should avoid. You can you can allow a, a rush route actually in your base, um, but if you do so, you should at least um, direct the rush by clever 
wall placement or um, yeah the st stop it in a in its tracks with clever placement of stasis mines or shock towers or outposts or whatever but we'll get there um, one of the questions that yeah, I always uh, I'm not I'm not always facing, and I'm not really sure if it's the right strategy or not, is what to do with these um, buildings that give you, or give the attacker extra ability points. Every building that you destroy gives the attacker one ability point, but there are certain buildings that give him extra points. It's the Combiner Lab, it's the Space Bridge, it's, um, I think, the Power Core Lab, and um, the Research Lab. I think these four are the ones with um, extras. I'm not sure about the scanner, but I don't think so. Um, so the big question is, do I offer this extra ability point? In my eyes, there are two ways to deal with these buildings. You, you, you either put them all the way to the back um, to keep your attacker away from these extra points as long as possible, or you give it away right in the front so that maybe um, his ability points max out at 35. Um, before he can actually use up his abilities. So um, yeah, this, these are the two two ways to deal with it. And I usually go um, choose the way to put all these to the back of the base um, and yeah, keep my attacker away from from these. Um, not sure it's, it's the, not sure if it's the best strategy, but I it's basically what I do with all my bases. And so far it worked out pretty well. So we'll uh, just throw these back here. Um, same as the HQ, maybe I will rearrange this by a square or two later in the process, but so far it's it's all right. Okay, so um, we want to, we don't want to be uh, the base to be too widespread to avoid a prime rush. Then I don't want the base to be uh, soloed by dead end or cup if you're playing out about, of course. Um, so you need your um, headquarters to be protected. And um, I see a lot of people protecting the HQ with um, one or two defenses, maybe. I don't think it's enough, because if you've got a strong cup, you can easily jump to the back, kill uh, or take out the defenses, uh, the one or two that are in their back, and then still attack your HQ without being bothered. Um, and I think it's... Pr so I think you should have a, a, a more buildings to at, um, protect the HQ, and, and this is, I think, is a key, um, you should protect your uh, HQ from different ranges. Um, because let's say you have two autocannons or three autocannons um, around the headquarters, Cup could jump from one to another and maybe jump out of the range of, of one of the autocannons. Um, but if you have, let's say, two autocannons and maybe um, missile launchers and um, beam lasers or whatever, he will be attacked from different ranges. He has um, yeah, wider path to walk. Or you may have to use more jumps to take up the defenses. So, um, yeah, I think it's clever to protect the HQ at least from two different ranges. And um, I think the, the missile launcher is predestined to at least cover um, the, the HQ a bit. And I think... And don't, don't do the mistake like covering... Like putting a missile launcher here and thinking your HQ is covered. Because Cup can jump... Um, like like to to this area here, and um, yeah, he'll still be out of range. So make sure that the whole map is actually covered. Um, this has another reason, um, especially if you use auto cannons for um, protection, which I think is pretty clever because they are they have high def they have uh, pretty high health points, so Cup cannot take him out so easily, and. Um, they have decent range and all of that, so it's it's definitely not not a mistake to have auto cannons cover your your base. But auto cannons and mortars both have the um, ability to push back or knock back um, the the attacked enemy. And um, if you let's say um, put your auto cannon here like this, and um, they f and cup is somewhere here. And they fire at him. They will knock him back, and finally knock him out of, or ultimately knock him out of their own range. And then, but Cups is still in range of his own weapons because he is a medium range bot. So, um, same same deal here. Make sure that you cover the whole map 
and that you can't push Cub out of your own range. So, um, in th so this way now we would have uh, two other cannons, having the HQ covered and the missile launcher. Um, the missile launcher is is a is is not too easy to place because um, it has a great range, um, but which um, yeah, some people use like putting him here to cover the front area. I think it's it's better to have him cover the back area because um, in the back is what you really want to protect. So I have him some somewhere like here. It's I mean when you hit the HQ uh, 15, I think it's 15 or 16. Not sure where you get the second missile launcher. Uh, it's pretty cool to just have um, one missile launcher at each side and cover the HQ and a whole uh, a wide area around the um, around the base from two sides. That's pretty cool. Um, but so far I'm HQ 14, so I only have one of these. Um, so I have the um, the missile launcher and the other cannons cover this, uh, which what also is pretty good to protect the HQ from Cup is using an outpost back there. Um, plus defenses because the up uh, the cup will always focus on the outpost uh, bot first. I think uh, I think there are some bots that are ignored like Scourge, um, but um, he'll be distracted so that the auto cannons can fire. And if you have somebody like uh, let's say Mindwipe for example who can actually hack and kill cup, this is also a pretty good strategy. Not too sure if I will use the um, my outpost back there. Um, the hard part is to place these right so that they actually cover the area behind the um, the HQ. So maybe I will put the auto cannons here. And still, that should be enough. Should be enough. It's close, but um, with the outpost, it's okay to have it to put it like this. Um, and having it so shortly covered because um, as soon as the they, it, the outposts are only about how when they are triggered and then the bots walk around and the range of the of the outpost doesn't matter anymore. So I think this is uh, this is ultimately fine. Um, what I also like to do is um, bring a shock tower where my outposts are because um, now when the the bot comes into the range of the shock tower, um, they will also trigger one of the outposts. And um, yeah, this is also always good to have the attacker stopped at least for a few seconds um, while my outpost bots are involved. So much, I think, cup solo is, is covered so far. What is also um, a problem is the cup pull strategy. So um, you see a lot of bases where, we, where you have um, all the hard-hitting defense in the front here. And um, let's say two or three outposts and maybe an autocannon or something like that. And all the storage building in the back. Um, the problem here is if somebody comes, has Cup in its team and Prime, um, Cup can jump to the back, open up one of the outposts. Um, and after he went down, you can drop Prime and the team. And um, the, the outpost bot or con or whatever will walk to the front towards the team and as soon as he's in range of cups um, rush ability prime will rush the bot but the whole squad will rush the next building to this spot which is most likely one of the buildings in the back so um, you, barely, you basically give him a stepping stone to let the whole team rush to the back so i don't like these um the bases with two wide gaps in between and if you do so you should not offer an outpost in the back um, for the for the cup strategy. So um, I will not um, build a base with a with a um, with a gap like this. So we can have the outposts here in the back. But be mindful of that. If you build a base with a huge gap in the middle, don't have the outposts in the back because it will offer a cup pull strategy. Um, and the th the last one is the HQ smash that I don't want to fall victim to, um, where they just send in the flyers and um, or other hard hitting abilities and throw everything onto your uh, headquarters. This is basically covered by having the headquarters in the back. So um, we, we, are, we are fine on that front. Okay, so let's continue. What's the second one I don't want to, uh, the second rule. The second rule to me is, uh, or rule, is to avoid defense clusters, at least um, in a certain manner. Um, defense clusters mean um, something like this. Having all your defenses clumped together. 
Um, this is this is not a general problem. This m might be okay. Um, in my eyes, it's important to watch out which buildings you cluster. Um, as most of you know who play this game a little longer, because even the tutorial suggested to you, um, most people go for these defenses first. The mortars, the beam lasers, and the missile launcher. For simple, for simple reason, or two simple reasons in my eyes. First, they have a great range, so they can um, do some serious damage to your team before they are, before they are even in attack range uh, to, to attack these, these buildings. And um, they have pretty low health compared to the um, auto cannons or the laser turrets. So, um, if you build a defense cluster, which is not always a bad thing, and sometimes it's even unavoidable, don't cluster these. Don't cluster beam lasers with mortars, with missile launchers. If you want to build defense clusters, um, or need to build defense clusters, use some buildings to, to um, put in between these. Like auto cannons, laser turrets, shock towers, maybe because you know, all those shock towers is tricky because when perceptor is involved, um, this is a bombshell for the Decepticon side, and the shock tower is hacked. There will be some serious damage done. So um, yeah, as you can see, um, there's no perfect strategy in building a base, which I like about this game. Um, so if you do a cluster, don't cluster your motor lasers or missile launchers. Keep them apart, I think, um, because the, the, the most um, dangerous bots here to attack is, of course, Mixmaster Jazz with their orbital, uh, orbital Strike ability, which is devastating to these clusters. Um, Air Raid and Slipstream with their Fusion Bomb um, is also a problem. Um, Swoop Scourge, Sunstreaker... Um, Maybe I forgot somebody, but there are a lot of bots who can do serious area attacks. The Star Saber, of course, some Elita one. And if you lose these defenses in, let's say, with one or two abilities used by your enemy, you have a serious problem. So keep them apart. At least, at least some, some. Um, I think uh, three, th at least three squares, maybe four. Um, two to avoid these clusters. And um, yeah, this is just, so they are, um, they don't fall victim to these area attacks. I think if now the shock tower is hacked, oh, they are, yeah, they're actually still in range of the shock tower. Maybe we should just keep them away from the shock tower. I can't um, put the missile launcher to the front more because then my HQ isn't covered as much as I want it to be. Maybe one square. Yes, yeah, uh, still okay, still okay. And um, now they are, I think they are far, um, far spread enough. So what to do now with the beam lasers? I like to have the beam lasers cover the HQ as well, but I don't want to overdo it in this in this case. Maybe it's clever to change the auto cannon with the beam laser here. Now the auto cannon has at least this half covered. Plus the beam laser has yeah, this may be this may be good. Um, as I just said, there's no perfect design. And as I'm doing this on this one on the fly here while I'm talking to you. I'm pretty sure I will make some obvious mistakes <laughs> in designing this space, uh, letting alone the fact that um, if you ever attack my alternate account, um, you will see all the flaws in my base already if you watch this video. But it's fine with me, and um, if you find an obvious mistake, you are very welcome to state it in the comments, and um, I will uh, maybe answer to this or not, we'll see. Um, so now we have a, a great cover of the of the headquarters. We have um, different ranges. We have the um, key defenses, key long range defenses, spread out so that they are not killed by the shock tower and or an area attacker. And um, so this is all pretty good. If you do a cluster, I mean this is a cluster as well. I know, and it may be the beam lasers and the um, the mortars are too close together possible maybe take these down a bit um, but um, the autocannons have higher health and they usually um, 
will survive most area attacks, at least at the first first strike. And then um, people don't focus on these too much. So um, a design like this will, peop will uh, the attacker force him to use his one-shot bots if he wants to take out these, like um, the jets or the, um, the rocket-throwing gunners. Oh, hell. And um, so I think this might this might be clever this might be clever we'll keep it this way for now um the third reason or the third rule i want to adhere to is um that you force your attacker to face all your defenses there are several bases where you have to or you are able to choose a side where where you attack from and um the, the team then just walks up the left side, up the right side, and some of the defenses never fire a single shot before the HQ actually falls. And I think this is a big mistake. This is an, you should build an obstacle course for your enemy to walk through, and um, this includes facing all defenses um, in the process of doing so. And um, therefore, it's this is where the walls come into play. Well, a lot of people neglect their walls by not um, upgrading them because you need a lot of alloy and I know all of that, but um, my rule for, for upgrading bases is always keep one of your build bots free for walls and upgrade these walls because the walls are um, essential in directing the attacker's way. It's not not, not so much for, for uh, protecting defense buildings, it, it, it doesn't work for me. Um, of course, you can build uh, these honeycomb th things where you, um, um, where the melee bots have to go through the wards first to attack, let's say, a mortar or something like this. But there are always gunners involved who shoot over the wards. Now we have the um, the, the guardian bots, Sentius, Magnus, and Malus, who can, uh, whose special ability can fire through the wards and all of that. So it's not basically about defending single defenses. Or, um, but it's more about blocking out certain path, uh, certain path the team could take, or just leading them where you want them to be. So um, this is where all these bottleneck bases come from. So that the walls are built like uh, down this way and on the other side as well, symmetrical, so that the team is forced to go through the middle, through all the defenses, and. Um, you can be, how you design your bottleneck then is up to you. You can do some some time wasting stuff, like having all the um, high high health buildings, like the storages and the um, the harvesters up front, just to waste time and maybe um, give the long range defenses um, the opportunity to fire at the tackle a little longer. Maybe keep them busy with a high uh, with a with a heavy tank in an outpost up front. Um, this is one thing you can do, or you can try to build a real kill zone where they just have to walk through a narrow uh, bottleneck and everything fires at them at once and hopefully uh, kills them. As you can see, we're still in the middle of the event, um, but my fuel cells are down, so we have time to talk. <laughs> so what you actually do is up to you. Um, I think it's always clever to have some um, distracting buildings with, with, uh, within your, your defenses. Um, not only to keep bots busy, also because there are some um, abilities that will take down something like this pretty fast. Let's say you, you hit a Scorch um, and there's nothing to distract his, his fire mission. And from firing at defenses, they will take um, all the defenses pretty fast. Um, of course, if you even if you put all this, uh, this stuff in between here, um, it could still happen that they have um, um, uh, uh, it's, uh, Optimus Primal for the Autobots, which is the ah the the, the Beast Wars Megatron, um, which can be perfectly combined with uh, with, with Scourge and force him to to only attack defenses, even if there is distraction in between. Um, but it's that's pretty unlikely. Uh, maybe in wars, yes, but um, not not too. Uh, likely to happen. So, what you want to do is build some sort of um, yeah path or force force your attacker through some sort of path, and um, you can do so by by doing what I can. You can um, 
invest a lot of time in thinking about proper wall placement. I'm pretty sure whatever I will do now is not the best way to uh, to build walls. I just want to give you a short impression of what I mean with um, with a bottleneck so that you can find out for yourself how to do your walls properly. Um, moving walls sucks balls. <laughs> this is the least favorite part of base building for me. It's super effective, it's super important to have a um, a good placement of walls, but it sucks to do. It's a pain to do, so um, don't get lazy on this. Just uh, just just get over with it. It, does, it, it, it. If you don't do it, you will pay for it later. Trust me. So let's have these here as a distraction and maybe protect my storage a little bit from um, being taken too early. So as you can see now, I've protected the left and the right side of the base. So when um, um, the important part is to leave an opening for the bots to to walk towards. Let's say um, oh, something's not something strange here. Somewhere I have made a mistake with my symmetrical. Oh, but where? The wall should be here, so that it's symmetrical. It's not, and I don't know why. Maybe I'm not all the way back here. Oh, I am. And I'm here as well. So, where is my mistake? I don't know. I don't know. I, I will fix this later. I like symmetrical bases. Here comes my OCD into play. <laughs> um, it's always good if you build walls like this not to close them up. Because let's say if you have the walls like... Um, that's not perfect. It's just for for the sake of demonstration. If you have it like this and the team walks up from the point where Sunstreaker is right now, they will walk here and they will face your wall here and start to attack these or this or this or maybe this wall to get to these buildings here. If you open up a path like, like this, if you let an opening in the walls, it's pretty likely that they will not attack here but we'll walk around the walls to get there and um, therefore you will force them into the middle of the base into your bottleneck that's why i like like designing bases in the in this way hell this pisses me off that it's, just, it's not symmetrical what did i do wrong here i think it's because the hq is not in the exact in the exact um center of the map i guess that's the reason we'll try this We'll try this out now. Just building a, a path from the um, center of the bay. Ah, yes, you can see. One square two on the left, too far. Now begins the fun part of correcting this. But um, actually, having a non-symmetrical base isn't the worst worst thing in the world gameplay wise because um yeah, you may confuse <laughs> confuse the, the, the players who attack you because they, um, they don't see the way your base is designed right away so it's not it's not actually a, a bad thing to do but i just just aesthetically i hate <laughs> unsymmetrical bases maybe this is a flaw but um yeah that's just the way I am. Deal with it. Now it should be better. Kaboom. Yes, this is more so, more what I like. So um, I think this one needs to go down. This needs to go here. And this needs to go up. Mm. Yep, now we have space for the um, Where does the mortar come from? Oh, it's over here. <laughs> so, excuse me while I'm correcting my mistakes here. We'll be back to topic pretty soon. 
All right, so we fixed this. So we're building a little bottleneck, a wall bottleneck here. Um, you could try to maybe, uh, if we do it like this, it will close now. We will not, we will not do this. We will not do this. We could do it like this. Doesn't really matter. Important thing is to force your attacker where you want them. And what I like to do is when you have some sort of uh, central opening like this. Oh, five star shards. Thanks team for playing along while I am busy building my base. Um, what I like to do is um, having these entrances in a wall covered by defenses. In this case we have the, um, the two mortars, we have the missile launcher. Although it's pretty likely that at least the launcher will be taken out by some sort of flyer um, before the um, the squad actually comes here. But when they come here, I'd like to stop them in their tracks, let's say with, um, with the stasis mines and um, with a shock tower. So when they walk here, they will have to um, walk into the stasis mine and be fired at for at least a few seconds. Maybe we can add um, laser turrets here. Oh, this is an anti-air laser, actually. Um, I think I will... What to do with this anti-air laser? Yeah, it's good there. Um, because if somebody wants to... Uh, air attack my mortars and my launcher that will have at least go through this um, anti-air laser. Always important about this core is that you uh, keep in mind that they don't attack ground user units anymore. So um, for this, this stasis shock tower zone here, this one is pretty useless here. So I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I think it will do. It will do. Would be better to have a standard. I will do. Let's have a a standard laser turret here and we'll think about something for the anti-air laser uh, next. Um, the way you design, uh, you wait, the way you block the, the, the left and right wing of your base, it's completely up to you. You can do something like this in a di uh, in an angle, you can do it straight out, like uh, you're just building something like, like, like this to the side, this is also pretty nice. Um, the important part is to force your attacker to the middle of the base. If you, if you, because if you, if you manage to do this, they will, in the end, they will either have to overpower your base, which is not too unlikely when you're only in HQ 14. Um, and if you have a maxed base, they will have to walk through the base with uh, a lot of medics. This is something that you can't actually avoid if you have a strong walker team with medics and, 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 and flyers that can one-shot your, your highest defenses, you're pretty much lost. You can't do, can't do too much about it. Um, but um, at least they can do, you can force them to, do, to use that strategy. And maybe if you um, face um, an alliance with members that don't have strong walker teams, you might sneak off with a win or two. So that's the, that's the basic idea. I don't know why, but I like this idea of just closing the wings here. So we'll just, uh, we'll just do this. Not sure if it's the best strategy. Um, I, I designed so many bases and um, the ideas sometimes are, all, uh, the ideas are always good, but they don't always work out as they were supposed to be. So even if you design something that you think is a cool base, um, it's it's quite possible that somebody will, um, will walk in and just uh, kill your idea <laughs> or, or show you or show off the, the weakness of the base that you were not thinking about. So Yep, we'll do the walls like this. So now the, the sides are covered and it's pr it's most likely that they will walk straight towards the base and then we will have to design the front. Not too much walls left now, which is a bummer. So um, maybe I would... 
I will rebuild this here uh, later. And um, there's one thing you can do to stop a prime rush, or at least to make a prime rush a little more unnerving for your attacker. And this is using um, a wall placement like this, so that if, let's say, um, they, they do a prime rush to, let's say, first to this, um, this laser turret here, and then up to the to the auto cannon to have the um, attackers rush around the walls. You can at least um, stop them for a few seconds by throwing in a stasis mine here. And um, it will not prevent the rush itself, but at least it will um, hold it for a few seconds and maybe confuse your um, your uh, um, attacker long enough to... Is it that right now? Nah. To the upside there. And long enough to, yeah, maybe do a mistake or maybe um, Megatron and or Optimus Prime will go down in this in this area here before the team can continue the rush and then we'll they will just spread out and um, be scattered everywhere. So this is this is a pretty good strategy to um, actively offer um, a rush route, but not um, letting the rush be completed. Might be a strategy for you. Your base, your rules. So um, we can take the auto cannons to here, then we can um, put the harvesters up here. Um, the harvesters is such a, is, they are they are a good way to um, or a good building to use as distraction buildings. But I actually love to have all my harvesters at least a bit closer together because I hate collecting resources all over the map. It's 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 just a just a practical reason for me um, to have at least the alloy. Uh, harvesters together and the energy harvesters together in the end it doesn't really matter but um yeah that's that's me your base your rules so far now what to do with the rest we need to um design a front that the attacker will oh it will attract the attacker to go to the center um, maybe this is the place for the anti-air laser now. So we will, we will cover the mortar. We will cover the the the, uh, the flight entrance area of the of the back of the base. This might work. This might work with the laser turrets and the shock towers. It's always important not to not to have them up front because they will um, right, as the first defense is because the attacker could just drop a gunner and take these out without taking any damage, which would be. Not good, not good. So what do we want now? So we have, if, if I have not, I'm thinking about closing up this side here um, because otherwise they would just walk into here. But in the end, it wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing if they do so. Because if they walk in here, they will walk into the stasis mine, into the shock tower, still be attacked by everything. So maybe I will intentionally um, open this this one up, and then build some walls here around this one. I don't think I have any more walls left. This is pretty weak, um, admitted, but um, this is all because I have now this wing. And this one on the side. Maybe it's too much. Maybe one of these would be enough. Maybe I will cut this this one short to have more walls to the front. Um, well, but I will maybe I will just test drive this base um, in the next war. And if it works, it works. And if it's not, then it will be redesigned. Um, like all bases will be sooner or later. So let's have a nice little cluster of buildings here, maybe more to the middle so that they 
either walk up here and right into the, the, the mines or walk to the front and at least have to go all of, through all of this. I think that's pretty, that's okay. Um, I thought about throwing in the mortar here and letting the outpost from, maybe that's better. Out of the range of the shock tower, which is nice. And um, yeah, my build bots are just cannon fodder as always to push, pull them to the front. I still have um, some harvesters. And we'll put them here. So, this is the design for now. It's not too bad. I don't know if it's if it's uh, if it will work. But we have um, let's let's double check the three rules. Do we have a prime rush route or a rush route? Not directly. Um, they could actually do the first rush to this building or this by dropping the the squad to the side and then walking up here. Then you could rush this one and then you could rush up there. This is possible. But if they do so, um, the team will walk into the stasis mine and maybe Prime Rush, uh, Optimus Prime and or Megatron will die be before the team actually arrives. So I'm fine with this. Cup Solo is completely covered. Uh, cup Pull is not an option here with all the walls and no gap in between. And um, the HQ Smash is also not an option because the HQ is far, far away from the front. So that rule is checked. Second rule is the defense clusters. Um, these are all, maybe this one is a problem between the mortar and the beam laser. Um, but I will keep it for now. Maybe it's so so far in the back that they at least have to walk through the base first before they get there. Um, the others are fine. The shock towers don't have too much vital systems around them. This one more than this one, but it's fine. So um, this one's covered, and um, yeah, having them, and they will have to walk through all defenses if they come in like this. So they will have to walk this base or overpower it with the um, with the flyers and gunners and everything. I think that's fine with me so far. So good. We'll give this a check, and um, yeah, this is this is the way I design my bases. Um, I had a, I had a gap design with with uh, this this account before where I had some defenses in the back a nice little uh, wall triangle around the back a wall triangle at the front and um, huge gap in between but I had all my outposts up front so that they were busy and taking all the abilities of the um, outpost bots first before walking to the back so the couple was not an option the rush was not an option due to the gap this is was also pretty nice and um, yeah. I think this is okay. Um, so far, so good. So um, these are my three rules. Maybe they will um, apply to your bases as well, or you may want to use them for your bases as well. Um, care about your walls. Don't forget the walls. Care about the placement of your stasis mines. Don't waste them somewhere in the front just to let the attack begin a few seconds late. It's it's just not worth it. Lose the, use them clever. To keep them locked in a kill zone or to keep them locked at the side when they rush. Um, use your wards cleverly to direct the path of your attacker. Um, use distraction buildings in between your defenses. And I uh, think you should be covered. But always remember there is no perfect base design. Every base can be cracked with a powerful team or the right strategy. And we have so many diverse spots in this game right now. That it's absolutely impossible to cover every single way of attack in a base. Um, we could also talk about power cause now, but I think we will keep this one for a later video. All right, I think I'm done here. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to comment this video. I'm looking forward to it. And um, yeah, I will see you next time. Bye, draw it out.